then was what is that word? See there? I could read this. <laughs> Very good. All right. I'll start with uh, okay. I'm gonna answer three questions. Four, five, seven, five questions. But I'll ask you guys a question first. Uh, Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican, right? No, you were Puerto Rican. You and you were. Uh, I'll start here with these. What is the history of Puerto Rico? What's the history? Before that. Okay. The word Boricua. You heard the word. What does it mean? You guys are like the black kids. They don't know either. I don't know my stuff either. Okay. Uh, El Salvador. Oh yeah. That is located where? South America. Or central? Central? Oh, God. Pull it up for me. Okay. Central America. Very good. All right. The Indians in Central America, what were they called originally? What kingdom were they? Okay, you have the Aztecs, right, which was Mexico. Then you have the Incas, which was South America. Then you have the Mayans. The Mayans, okay. It's very important that you know that because the three of you is what I'm talking about. Because your history, you don't realize how important you are in the world, but you're very, very important. Uh, and one of your questions was that I liked. Uh, who wrote it? Uh, what is it? Okay, she wrote, um, if Jesus Christ is described as a black man, why is that not the image we are taught in any religion, classes, or church? Alexandra, you wrote that? Yes. Okay. Very important. It goes to the reason I'm asking you three guys these questions. Um, in order for Spain to conquer you, they had to change your identity. They changed your identity, they were able to enslave you. Okay. Um, if we can read Psalms, the 83rd chapter. Okay. What you had, name some of the uh, conquistadors who came by. Name some. Okay, that's good. Hernan Cortez. Ponce de Leon is the one that conquered Puerto Rico. Okay. Uh, when Columbus came to uh, Santo, uh, Santo Domingo, what did he do? Because in Santo Domingo, there's a big statue of Christopher Columbus, right? You've been there before? Oh my God. All right. I should have gone for that. But yeah. okay, in Santo Domingo, in the city, there's a huge statue of Christopher Columbus just as in Puerto Rico. What did Christopher Columbus do? He did take over the land. And what did he do with the people? He made them change how he went like that. What did he do? How did he do it? Because the same thing I'm talking about goes for you in El Salvador. What happened? That's what he did. A lot of times you hear slavery, you think of black people, right? The first ones. No, you were the first ones. When Christopher Columbus came, uh, Ponce de Leon, he enslaved the people. He sent at least 3,000 of you to Spain to serve as slaves in Spain. Then the rest, he made you workers, and he cut your hands off if you could not bring about an element of gold or diamonds. Puerto Rico, it was called Puerto Rico because of the wealth that was there. They said that is the most richest island he's ever seen, so he called it Port of Riches. He said children played with marbles, with uh, diamonds as they were marbles, when you read the Chronicles. There's a book called Flame of Resistance, the history of Puerto Rico. Uh, it's always out of stock, but keep searching on Amazon, it'll pop up one day. Can you read Psalms 83, please? Watch this. Psalms chapter 83, verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult 
and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. So God has what? Enemies. I bet you didn't know God has enemies. It's recorded in the Bible, God has enemies. Who are his enemies? Let's read on, go ahead. For they, they have, go ahead. For they have taken crafty counsel against thy people. So the enemies of God took crafty counsel against God's people. <laughs> this goes back to the, why I was asking you who you are. You don't know who you are. You probably think everyone is God's people, right? Anybody, everyone is God's people. See, that's a common mistake. If everyone is God's people, why was it important to enslave your ancestors and change their identities? Nobody ever asked that question. Go ahead. And consulted against thy hidden ones. The hidden ones meaning you don't know who you are. The hidden ones is those who don't know who they are. Go ahead. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Come, let us cut them off from being a nation. In the Bible, when you look at, uh, let me see, right here. There's something called the 12 tribes of Israel from Genesis to Revelation. When they went into slavery, their nationalities were changed prophetically and they were divided. Okay, so it was very important for the conquistadors to divide the Puerto Ricans from the Cubans, for example. Could not be a family, would no longer be one people. Divide El Salvador, which is Central America, from the Mexicans. Divide them from South America. That was their plan. You had to divide the people up because they were one. Regardless of the various names, they were later on given. Go ahead. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Nobody knows who the 12 tribes of Israel are. These 12 tribes, you can ask any church, ask any rabbi. They don't know who these people are. Why? Because it's the best kept secret on earth. It's a secret. So, we don't. For they have consulted together with one consent. Uh -huh. They are confederate against thee. Right. The tabernacles of Edom. Edom is the biblical name for the conquistadors. The Spanish. Okay. So now, you may ask yourself, well, if we're one people, why am I very dark skinned and you guys are very, very light? Why? Have a clue, Alexander? Um, yes, Have a clue? Have you ever thought? Because we're so spread apart? What do you mean? No, like you said that we're enslaving our sin to others. Watch what the Bible says. Hosea chapter 7, please. The Bible answers everything. What you must remember, the Bible is not a book of myths. It's a history book. That's why it's always the uh, best seller. The scholars read it. The leaders of society all read this book because it dictates your history. That you don't read. Watch this. This is why we look somewhat different. Right? Hosea chapter 7, verse 8. Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. When you look, Ephraim is the Puerto Ricans. They were the leading uh, tribe amongst the southern, northern kingdom of Israel. Read that again. Ephraim. He had mixed himself among the people. That's talking about interracial marriage. When the conquistadors conquered you, you started to intermarry with them. That's what started to happen, right? Ephraim is a cake not turned. You ever cook a pancake? Okay, if you don't flip it over, one side is what and what is the other side if you don't flip it? Right. One side is dark, one side is very light. So read that part again. Ephraim. He hath mixed himself among the people. Uh -huh. Ephraim is a cake not turned. So the northern kingdom is like a cake not turned, meaning some are very light like yourself, some are very dark like me. You can go from Colombia, El Salvador, all the way to Puerto Rico. Some of your family members will be dark like me, some will be very light like Alexander. That's because of the prophecy of one, the conquistadors came and started to intermingle and intermarry with them. That's what happened. Go ahead. Strangers have devoured his strength. So strangers that devoured the strength of your people is the conquistadors. He took away your history, your culture, everything. Go ahead. And he knoweth it not. And many of you don't realize your history. That's why when I ask you, you don't know. That's why it says that he knoweth it not. So now, when we go to Deuteronomy 28, I want to show you. You let me to keep it rest with me with the time. Uh, <laughs> Let's talk about Jesus Christ briefly. Je Jesus Christ. Um, one of the questions was, if Jesus is described as a black man, why is that not the image we are taught in any religion classes or church? Remember what we just read in Psalms 83. It said, Lo, thy enemies have taken a tumult. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Remember that? So, 
If you knew that Jesus Christ looked like your ancestors, would you be able to remain a slave forever? No, because you would eventually revolt and fight because you'd be like, no, this is, this is wrong. So it was important for the conquistadors to change everything. That's what they did with the Vatican, okay? So let's read that. Uh, Revelation, no, no, Matthew 24, I want verse five. Jesus Christ made a statement about his appearance. Watch this. I'm going to see who can figure this out. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Read it again. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Okay, Alexander, explain that verse. Saying, I am Christ. Yes, that's what it means, but who? Historically, I want you to think history. Christ spoke about it in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, and verse 15. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 15. Uh -huh. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Okay. The image of the beast that the Bible speaks of. If you see here in the flyers, right? You see the sketches, Caesar Bogier by Leonardo da Vinci. In your library here, you can probably get a book uh, written by Marion Johnson. It's called the Bougiers. This is where we got these images. In the book, they, she shows you the sketches. How during the Renaissance, they formulated that Caesar Bougier would be the Renaissance image of Jesus Christ. So they painted his image as the son of God. And Columbus, and then Cortez, Ponce de Leon, they went throughout the world with that image. Watch this, read it again. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. The life they gave that image is the life of Jesus Christ. They no, no longer said it's Caesar Bourget. They said this is the life of Jesus, okay? That the image of the beast should both speak. The way that the image speaks, every year you'll see movies with actors that look like this. Like, um, what's that, um, pa Passion of the Christ. Mel Gibson did a famous movie, what, two years ago? Passion of the Christ. He looked for an actor who looks similar to this. So that when you go to the movie, <laughs> hey, Suki, stop. You cry, everybody cries, falls out. Because he's speaking the words of the Bible. We got part again. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast, whoever would not worship the image of the beast, should be killed. What would happen if you didn't worship it? What would happen? What would happen? That's history. This is how the conquistadors got the Indians of Central South America, North America, and then Caribbean islands to worship the white image of Jesus. The Bible is a book of history. It is not a mythological book of feel-good religion. Churches have made it into that because of the government. However, it is a book of your history. It documents everything. Anything you want to know regarding your history, it's in that book. You just have to sit down and take your time to read it. And once you see that the Bible is about you, you'll see the Bible with new eyes. Many times we read the Bible and we think it's about another race of people. You'll think about Los Judíos, right? You speak Spanish. What am I saying, Los Judíos, who? The Jews in Israel, right? Israelis, right? Watch this, give me Revelation 2.9. And I'm gonna, we're gonna read the verse. I'm not gonna put my own inflections in it. You hear the verse. And I want you to listen very good. What Jesus is Jesus Christ speaking. Go ahead. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Hmm. So I'm not going to interpret it. I'll ask you questions. Who's going throughout the earth saying that they are the Jews? You just said it. Yeah. Who? What do they look like? Do they look like me? They're Caucasians, right? Right? What did Christ say? Read that part, the bottom part of that. I, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Who are they really? Did I, did, now did I write that? I want to show her that. 
show all three of them, because they might think we wrote that and made it up. Look at it. Look at it. I want you to see it for yourself. That way nobody says, oh, you guys are racist. No, we're not. It's in the Bible. If, if, if it wasn't in the Bible, we would never say it. It's right there. Read it very good. Read it very good and ask yourself, have you ever read that in church? Has your ministers ever read that to you? No. Why? Because the government, when you become a pastor, you are taught certain scriptures to avoid, never read to the congregants. Why? Because you might come together and revolt. They don't want that. Keep them ignorant. Keep them worshiping Caucasian Jesus. Where are you from? From El Salvador. El Salvador, oh, just like her. What's your name? Joaquin. Joaquin, okay. Um, so, now, get the description of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was a Jew of the tribe of Judah. And it gives you his physical description in the book of Revelation chapter 1. Come on, verse 14 and 15. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Do you have flyers, Joaquin? Hey, I want him to get a fly so he knows we're not making this up. And I want to, yeah, thank you. I, want, I know you don't got a Bible, right, Joaquin? Not on you. Not on you. I, I want to make sure you know I'm not making things up or putting my own feelings into it. So some of these, there's scriptures on it. We're going to read Revelation 1, 14. Yeah. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So Christ had white woolly hair. Go ahead. As now, white this as hair snow. is not woolly hair. Pelo Crespo. You speak Spanish, right? Crespo lana, right? Go ahead. As white as snow. Mm -hmm. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Go ahead. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. Brass is brown. Okay, like for example, your complexion would be considered brass color. But if you burn that complexion, it'll get like this, very dark. Jesus Christ is described in the Bible, but they don't teach you that. Never teach you that, they'll teach you this. That way, you know what that causes? Division between you and me. You're like in Santo Domingo, they'll have stores with Dolls. You've never been there, so I'm talking, you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they have dolls called mammy dolls, uh, negritas. And they go, oh, I'm not bad, that's black, ah, sucia, or that, the haitiano, sucia, puerto. You ever hear this? It keeps a constant division of hatred. But everybody will love this. But the people that look like Jesus, you have a natural hatred for us. <laughs> these, these dirty black people. This is what happens. You understand? This is historically what has happened, what has occurred, and the Bible is the only thing that can stop it. The only thing. So Joaquin, we just read the description of Jesus Christ, right? I'm gonna show you another description, Daniel 10, verse five and six, to show you. We're not making it up. It's in the Bible. We're going to teach the Bible and that will usher in the second coming of Christ. The lies will stop, come on. Daniel chapter 10, verse five. Then I lifted up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded up with fine gold of Euphaz. His body also was like the barrel. And barrel means green, green gold, right? And his face as the appearance of lightning. So Christ had a power image coming from, I had like a halo, go ahead. And his eyes as a lamp of fire. That's what we just read in Revelation, very similar, go ahead and his arms and his feet. Now he looked at Jesus' arms. He said his arms and his feet. Go ahead. Like in color. See the word colors in the Bible. Like in color. To polished brass. Polished brass means brass burned in the furnace. So, uh, Calvin asked if my father was Peruvian. That's Peru, that's South America, right? What tribe would my, what tribe would be? Ah, you can't write. <laughs> For South America, that would be Asher. Right there from Colombia to Uruguay. That's the tribe of Asher. Like the people in Brazil, okay? Many of them look like the three of you. A lot of them look like me. You ever been to Brazil? No. no man. You ever look at movies from Brazil? Nah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You see the movie City of God? Yeah. Very good movie. You see how dark a lot of them are? You can see that all throughout South and Central America, out the way we look. All of us in this room. That's that's us. So now. Someone asked, is this a religion or a practice? This is your nationality. The Bible is about a race of people. 
The word religion is found five times in the Bible, and when God uses the word religion, it's referring to his laws. He's not referring to a denomination like Catholic, Baptist, Pentecostal. He's not talking about that. that you won't find that in the Bible at all. Have you ever read Baptist, uh, uh, Baptist Church in the Bible? You read about John the Baptist, people who baptized people. You ever read Catholic in the Bible? It's not in there. It was made up by your conquist the conquistadors who conquered you, taught it to you, and you accept it because if your ancestors didn't accept it, they would be, what does that mean, Alexandria? Dead. Dead. So now they pass it down from child to child to child. Here you are today, you accept whatever you're told. So now, we're showing you with biblical reference, okay? So, watch this. Let's go to the first slide. Deuteronomy 28. I know you got, you got a, some time for me. Oh, you got 10 minutes for me. Okay. Deuteronomy 28. Okay. Hey, what color was Moses? The prophet Moses. You heard about Moses, right? Yeah. What color was he? Well, we assume he's white. You assume he's white. Because everything good is white. And everything black is bad and evil. <laughs> I was taught that. Don't feel bad. I was taught that. Uh, Moses had a sister named Miriam. <laughs> you ever seen the Ten Commandments, the movie? Yeah. He had an older sister named Miriam. Okay. Okay. Watch this. I'm gonna show you something about Moses. Give me Exodus four and six. I think it is about Moses, his complexion. Remember, the children of Israel were where? What continent were they in when they were enslaved in the Ten Commandments? Um. We see when the children of Israel were with Moses, right? Where were they when Moses delivered them? Where were they? Deli delivered them from where? Music, um, Gianni, I think you know this. Joaquin? Asia. Con you said continent, right? So it was going to be Asia. No, that's oh, China. Right they weren't in China. I don't know where I'm going with this. So. <laughs> they they were in. Gianni said Asia, so I was like, They were in Egypt. Egypt is Africa. Did you know Egypt was in Africa? You knew that? Are you sure? <laughs> you knew that, Joaquin? Egypt is in Africa. Oh, yeah, I, I knew that. You knew that. I knew. Can you help these three right here? <laughs> Egypt is in Africa. <laughs> Read that. Exodus 4 and 6, please. Book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 6. This is the first miracle God showed Moses. And the Lord said, furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. Put your hand into your bosom and into your garment. Go right? ahead. And he put his hand into his bosom. Mm -hmm. And when he took it out. And when he took it out. Behold. His hand was leprous as snow. His hand was leprous as snow, meaning the melanin was taken from him. It looked like snow. Read. And he said, put thine hand into the bosom again. Uh -huh. And plucked it out. He plucked it out. Bosom. And what? And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. So then his hand looked like the rest of his flesh. So, Moses could not have been a Caucasian in Africa. You understand? You understand? Impossible. Impossible. The Greeks didn't come in power yet. Alexander the Greek came in the year 333 BC. That was thousands of years later. Prior to that, everybody was black. Moses was black. Solomon was black. Everybody was black. Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 20. Let's get to the point here. Calvin, just give me a few minutes. Oh, yeah. All right. So, when the 12 tribes of Israel came out of Egypt, this is what Moses told the 12 tribes. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to observe to do all his commandments. See this word, commandments? When you read the New Testament, you read the word religion. But it's talking about the same thing. Go ahead. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. I want you to look at this word, curses. What are some of the curses? Jump down to verse 32. I want to get to the point for Calvin. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Uh -huh. So and with you with you four, your sons and your daughters will be given unto another people. The conquistadors is the another people. That's what happened, right? And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Uh-huh. And there shall be no might in thine hand. And there shall be no might in thine hand. So, once the conquistadors conquered you, there was no might in your ancestors' hands. So now, how did your ancestors, we talked about Santo Domingo, Puerto Rico. 
Shiploads of them was taken to Spain. How do you think they got from Santo Domingo, Puerto Rico, to Spain? How did they get there? You heard what he said? Boat. Boat. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't fly. It took, got there by boats. Watch this, verse 68. Verse 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So see this word Egypt? Anybody knows what this word means? Egypt. It has a meaning. It means slavery. Watch this. Get uh, Exodus, was it 20? Exodus uh, 20. The book, the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. This is going to explain this word here. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Egypt, go ahead. Out of the house of bondage. You heard, you heard what it said? Out of the house of bondage. That's what this word makes reference to. House of bondage. Which means, give me another easier word for house of bondage. Slavery. Slavery. Go back to verse 68 again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Slavery again. With ships. You see this? You see this? Now, if we read this originally, you were first, if I asked you who went into slavery on ships, you'd say the blacks, right? But, as we discussed, they sent shiploads of you to Spain from 1492 on up. Read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way Moses spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. Your, home, your true homeland, your identity. Go ahead. And there. And there, once you got off the slave ships. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. For what? For bond men. That means slave men. And bond women. Slave women. Go ahead. And no man shall buy you. Meaning no man shall redeem you. Meaning save you. So, your ancestors, as mine, went into slavery on ships. Now let's go to the summit of images. Show me some pictures. These, were some, these are the ones you all know about with the blacks. But write this down. Write this down. I'm going to give you something to look at. There's a movie called Conquest of Paradise. Very important for Puerto Rico and the Salvador. Conquest of Paradise, 1492. That's the name of the movie. Starring, I can't spell his name, Jean-Luc Depardieu. It's a French actor. But Conquest of Paradise, 1492. It talks about the Indians going into slavery, being sent to Spain on ships. Watch it. It's going to, it's going to blow your mind. You'll be like, oh, shoot, they don't teach us that in school. So next slide, please. These are some of the slave ships. Now you ask yourself, I asked you who are the people of God you had originally sent? Everybody. But did everybody go into slavery on ships? No. The Chinese didn't go into slavery on ships. Neither did the East Indians or the Arabs or the white men. There was two groups, the blacks and the Latinos, who went in slavery on ships. Go ahead, next slide. And here we go, Northern Kingdom. This is what happened. This is um, uh, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabel of Spain, go ahead. Okay, Deuteronomy 28, the Northern Kingdom slavery. This goes for you four here, I'll deal with you in a minute. Columbus viewed the Taino themselves as a way to amass his personal wealth. He selected 500 to be exported to Spain as slaves and 500 to serve as slaves to the Spanish on the island. Columbus probably boasted to the Spanish monarchs about the slave potential and its economic benefits. That's why today Puerto Rico is one of the poorest nations. How could they be one of the poorest nations, but they were called Puerto Rico, Port of Riches? Columbus and the conquistadors took everything. Took everything. Left you with nothing, now to give you welfare. And you go, oh, I get welfare. That's, that's nothing to clap at. That's, that's, they robbed you. Then they tell you, go get a job. You see the insults, the smack in the face. You understand? Next slide. OK. Here we go here, these are the Indians, the Tainos, Santo Domingo, Puerto Rico, El Salvador. What I want you to see, they had the Indians working in, as slaves. Notice the cross in the Jesuit's hands, okay? Notice they're hung doing trees. These are ancient paintings from the um, time of 1492 on up. Do y'all see the pictures, okay? And they, this is them, they made you work in the fields to get gold, diamonds. Next slide, please. Okay, let me see if I, okay, right here, right here. Right here. Ah, you know who this is? Alexander? His name was King Atahualpa. Yes. And the Catholics were telling him to accept the white image of Jesus or die. He asked the question, he said, when you die, he asked him, when you die, where will you go? 
He said, I'm going to heaven. He said, then I'd rather go to hell. That's what he said. And because they forced all the Indians, remember what we read earlier, who remembers what we read about? If you don't worship the image of the beast, you would be killed. This is what they did. Anybody that refused it, this is how all of you became Christian. This, right, this one image explains Christianity. This is how your ancestors, as well as mine, worship the white image of Jesus and Christianity. Next slide, please. Okay, here we go here. Remember I said, if you didn't bring about enough wealth, they cut your hands off. Okay, they cut the noses off the Indians. Okay, give me Lamentations chapter five. I'm gonna read something to you. What I'm going over with you, you're not gonna learn it in school. What I'm sharing with you, you're not gonna learn no place else. You understand what I'm saying? So, watch this, Lamentations 5. What do they call the Mexicans? The Mexicans that cross the borders, what do they call them? Immigrants or what? Aliens. Very good. Let's see what the Bible says. Right? Lamentations chapter 5, verse 2. Uh -huh. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. The strangers is talking about the white man. The inheritance is North, Central, South America. That's the inheritance of the Israelites. It's turned to what? What's that word he called them? It's turned to strangers. Go ahead. Our houses to aliens. Who took over the houses of North and Central South America? Right, but the Bible called them what? Read it again. It, our houses to aliens. You would see what the Bible's calling them? Aliens. But society has made you and me call our brothers aliens, illegal aliens. When God says no, the real aliens or the conquistadors that came and took everything from you. You see how they've played a mind game on us. Do you understand what I'm saying? We don't. We are orphans and fatherless. Because they killed your kings. Go ahead. Our mothers are as widows. Go ahead. We have drunken our water for money. You've drunken your water for money. You see that right there? Water is free. But in society today, you have to pay for it. Puerto Rico, you got your own water. Santo Domingo, your own water. El Salvador, your own water. North America, your own water. Once the white man came, they said, no, change that. Make them pay if they want water. There's another movie, right? There's that. It's on Netflix. It's called Even the Rain. Even the Rain. And it's about Bolivia. And they show you how the conquistadors made the Indians pay tax on rainwater. Historically true. We don't. Our, our wood is sold unto us. Our wood is sold unto us. Meaning the wood belonged to you, but the conquistadors sold it to you for money. Go ahead. Our necks are under persecution. Our necks are under persecution. That's the hanging of the Indians. Notice what the conquistador is doing with the baby. He's about to do what? With the baby. Huh? Yeah, how? He's going to smash oh, the baby's head against oh. And notice they're burned. They, they set them up by 13. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. They said hanging the Indians in 13 represented Christ. That's the, the king in the front. And these 12 represented the disciples. Okay? There's a book entitled, uh, I always forget the name. What is it next? Bob? Bob? De, la, De las Casas. De las Casas. It's in Spanish. Uh, and it goes into the description of he represents Christ, he represents the 12 apostles, then they burned you. This is for those of you that would not worship the white image of Jesus. This is what they did. We don't. We have given the hand to the Egyptians. We have given the hand to the Egyptians, meaning the oppressor. That's what it's making reference to. Okay? And to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. We don't. Our fathers have sinned. And are not. So our fathers have sinned. This is why we went through these curses. Our fathers sinned. We broke God's laws when Moses warned us. Go ahead. We have borne their iniquities. Uh -huh. Servants have ruled over us. Uh-oh. See that right there? Read that again. Servants have ruled over us. Who's ruling over us? So the white man that we all love so much, God calls them servants. There is none that doth deliver us out of their hand. Nobody can deliver us. You had great leaders. Do you know any Spanish great black leaders? Great leaders of El Salvador, Puerto Rico, who tried to deliver the people. Think. You ever hear of the young lords during the 60s? 
Y'all should know that. You, you three, you, Puerto Rico, you, you, the young lords, they were like, you heard of the Black Panthers? Yeah. They were just like that. During the 60s, tried to overthrow so Puerto Ricans would unite again as one. You don't know your own history. You have to know. This is why in class, when you go, I went to school, I went to college, all this. I was always embarrassed when they went over history because my history was all only slavery. They never told me nothing else. And when the teacher would ask me, I, I don't know, and all the white kids would laugh at me. This was back in the 80s. You don't know nothing. So now it's important that we learn our history. We don't. We got our bread with the peril of our lives. You got food with the peril of your lives, go ahead. Because of the sword of the wilderness. Now, what I want you to do, go back in this slide to the images of Jesus that you had. Images of Jesus, go back. Go, go right here, go, 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 go. Okay, read Deuteronomy 28, 64. This is, what, this is the name of the book, write that down. The Borgias, Marion Johnson. This is where you find the sketches that Leonardo da Vinci did. Read that for us, Deuteronomy 28, 64. Please. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. The Lord shall scatter you among all people. That's why as a race, we're all scattered. Go ahead. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. Go ahead. And there thou shalt serve other gods. There you shall serve other gods. Go ahead. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. This image never existed in ancient times. Never was there ever a way, Jesus. This is Renaissance, 1492 on up. Go ahead. Even wood and stone. Wood and stone images. In Brazil, they have a famous statue of Jesus like the, the white image. You ever see it? Very famous, and everybody goes to pray to that. But it's not Jesus. Read up. Was that it? That's it. Give me the next slide. Okay, this is who it really is. Caesar Bourget. He was the illegitimate son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. Rodrigo Bourget and his long-term mistress, Venosa de Catane. He is the model for the white image of Jesus Christ, replacing the true image and creating lasting confusion to our people. That's what you'll find out when you read the book, the Bourget's. That's what you'll find out when you read the Bible. You got that, Alec Next slide. Uh, give me some images. I want some pictures. Pictures, pictures. Go back. Oh, I can tell you about Zika too. But go ahead, go back. Did y'all know that the Zika virus is um, chronicled and uh, patented by the Rockefeller, Rockefeller Foundation from 1947? Zika. And it affects South America. Why only there and not parts of Florida where people from South America go to? These are the plagues that the Bible talks about. Okay? Next slide, please. Go back. I want the one about the, right here. Verse 60, yes, one, this is the one. For our sins, read verse 61 for us. Verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law. The book of this law is the Bible. Go ahead. Then will the Lord bring upon thee, until thou be destroyed. So because our people sinned, Sicknesses, plagues are upon us. Zika, AIDS, and it really affects what they call minority students. Minorities. Go ahead. Yes. No, I mean, it's wrong, like, time. I know, I know. You gotta go now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not a problem. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna deal with what you, what's your name, young man? Yeah. yeah. Kim? Yeah. Keanu. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna deal with that. So, you three, stay in contact with us. All right? Uh, come over here. This slide, this one. And if you have questions, Keanu, I want you to write them down for me. Oh, Joaquin, if you have questions, write them down for me. Don't be nervous, Joaquin. Don't be nervous. You nervous? Good. Thank you. Thank You're welcome. Thank you so much. Nice meeting. Nice meeting. Okay. Thank you, guys. No problem, folks. Take care. Take care. All right. Take it easy. All right. Come sit down. All right. Okay. So now, we got two. Puerto Rican? El Salvador. El Salvador. Where are you from? Uh, Caribbean. Caribbean, where? Antigua. Antigua, okay. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go through Deuteronomy 28 for you. you have any questions for me before we begin? Start first one. Again, questions. Okay. What I'm going to do is take you through the history of the ones you call blacks and the ones you call Latinos. You understand? Let's start the first one again. Give me the slide. 
So, in the Bible, there were 12 tribes of Israel. On the flyer that you have, look at it. Notice there are 12 tribes. Okay. Uh, religions today have taught everyone that nobody knows who the 12 tribes are. But you have to ask yourselves, when our peoples went into slavery, why did the conquistadors change your nationality? And why did your English change your nationality? You understand? So identities were changed. Why? What's the mystery? What's the secret? Come on. Verse 15. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So what we're going to identify are the curses. Knowing the curses, whoever the curses fit, you're going to find out who the Israelites are. Okay? Next slide, please. Read verse, verse 16. 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. So whatever city the Israelites would be in, the 12 tribes, they would be cursed. Whatever cities the Israelites went into, they went into slavery. Go ahead. And Next slide. Cursed. Okay, more cursed in the city. The slave market. Wall Street, you heard of Wall Street. Do you realize that Wall Street was a lot, one of the largest slave ports in New York? Wall Street. That's where the economy began. Because slaves were big business. The slave market located where Wall Street reached the East River was established in 1711 as a place where enslaved blacks and Native Americans could be hired or purchased. Wall Street, this is the, how economics began in America. Law, they call it old money. You may hear the term, old money or long money. Go ahead, next slide. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. So now, thousands of blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans were held in bondage and sold in the early colonial settlements of New France, which is Quebec up in Canada, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, and Upper Canada, which is Ontario. Next slide. Cursed shalt thou be in the field. Many of you know the, the history. They had the slaves picking cotton field. You heard us of history before, right? Next slide, please. Also, um, along with cotton, they had sugar cane. They had this in the Caribbean. They had this around El Salvador as well. Next slide. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store, meaning your businesses, your crops. Next slide. Okay. Read verse 18 for me. Verse 18. Uh -huh. Curse shall be the fruit of thy body. The fruit of your body is your children. Go ahead. And the fruit of thy land. That's your crops. Go ahead. And the increase of thy kind. This means cattle. The word kind means cattle. Go ahead. And the flocks of thy sheep. Next slide, please. Verse 19. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in. Meaning when you're born into the earth. Go ahead. And cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Meaning when you die. You would never know who you are. For when you're born, your parents wouldn't know who you are. When you die, your parents still won't know who you are. That is a curse. This is why in, um, on job applications, they'll have black, uh, white, uh, Hispanic, black or Hispanic white, or other, you understand? Come on. The Lord shall send, the Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke. Okay, the Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexing, and rebuke. Go ahead. In all that thou sayest come, come, lady, come here, come here. I don't want to cut in front of you. No, 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 come, 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 come. <laughs> I like people sitting in front of me. What's your name? Lachey. Lachey. Nice to meet you, Lachey. Keanu Joaquin. I like to know who I'm talking to. Okay. Uh, what verse are you at? Verse 20. Verse 20. Jump down to verse 32, please. Slide for verse 32. Okay. Uh, verse 32. Read that for me. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So what we're doing is proving the identity of the Israelites, that the Israelites would go into slavery according to the Bible. So the Bible says, prophetically, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto, see this term here? Another people, meaning another race. That's what this means, another race of people. Go ahead. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. If you ever see the movie Roots, you've seen the movie Roots? You've seen the movie Roots? 12 Years a Slave? You've seen that. How about you, Joaquin? Tagged on. Well, in the movie, 
They show you when families were divided, the mothers would scream and cry, and they, could, they had no might to get their children back. This is why some of us were sent to Brazil, some of us were sent to El Salvador, some of us were sent to Peru, and we were all split up. In El Salvador, they sent shiploads of you to Spain. Okay, that's the history you haven't found out yet. Come on. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Watch this. And there shall be no might in thine hand. No might means no military might, no economic might. To do what? To unite your people again as a race. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. I want to get to some key points. Stop right there. Read verse 36. Verse 36. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. So, El Salvador, you had kings set up in El Salvador. Did you know that? Okay, you did. The blacks that came from the west coast of Africa, the blacks that came from Europe, I bet you didn't know we came from Europe also. We came, you ever see a movie called um, Othello, starring Lawrence Fishburne? You ever heard of the Moors? Okay, the Moors were the blacks that ruled during the Middle Ages. Okay, during the, when the Renaissance ushered in, they started to conquer the Moors. There's a movie called Othello, starring Lawrence Fishburne, and they show you the history of that. Do me a favor. Put your hand on that book right there. What color is that book? Black. What color is your hand? So you just told me black. You see that? Black is the color of the crayon box, right? It's not an identity. It's not. You understand that? Okay. Okay. That's what this means. Your identities would be changed. What's your last name? Carmen. 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 What's your last name? Jones. Jones. What's yours? Corpio. Carpio. 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 Where's it come from? Okay. You don't know. Where's your name? Come from? Oh, very good. What about you? Okay. You're good. Very good. During slavery. When you were conquered, you were conquered. What the slave masters did was branded their last names into your backs. That's how, the, if you ran away, we could say, this belongs to the Joneses, this belongs to the Corpios. That's how they knew. So through generations and generations, your families glorifying these last, especially in the Caribbean. Oh, I didn't think we were burn family, I did. Listen, that's a white man's name, that's your name. You understand? But these are where our names came from. Whatever name, whether it's a Spanish name, English, British, the white man branded us, and that's where our names came from. That's what this is talking about, about us becoming an astonishment, a proverb and a byword, meaning your racial identities would be proverbs and bywords. Your last names are proverbs and bywords. Go ahead. Among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. So whatever nations we were sent to as slaves, we would be known as proverbs and bywords, OK? Meaning what? No racial identity. No true surname. Your surname is your last name. You don't know who you are. We're lost. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, here's some proverbs and bribes for blacks, African Americans. These are two. Anybody know where this word American comes from? You're in college. Where's it come from? America. Was named after Amerigo Vespucci. That's what it was named after. Africa. Leo Scipios Africanus, he conquered Hannibal during the Punic Wars. West Indian, anybody know what the word Indian means? You. It comes, it's a Spanish word, it comes from Indios, which means? It has a root to it. The root word of Indian is Indio, which is Latin for slave. West slave. So many of our people, I'm West Indian, really don't know what you're saying. You've done no research at all on these words. Okay, Latinos, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Mexican, Dominican, Colombian, Brazilian, Chilean, these are all proverbs and bywords, okay? Guyanese, Surinamese, uh, Ecuadorian, Bolivian, Guatemalans, so forth and so on. No, Native American Indians, Apache, Blackfeet, Cherokee, Cheyenne, Chickasaw. These are all proverbs and bywords. When the Bible gives everybody, listen to what I'm about to say, the Bible names every race on the earth. There's a biblical name for them. But when we were all conquered, the conquistadors, followed by the British, the French, they started to change the names of the people. That's what happened. Now, next slide, please. 
Uh, let's see. Next slide. Okay, let's pause right here. Start read from verse 38 to 40. Verse 38. Because mm -hmm. this is from this uh, from Puerto Rico. I want to start here. Go ahead. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field. Uh-huh. Louder. And shall gather but little in. Right, because you would not benefit from the works that they, the slavery, the colonialism that they suffered or something. Go ahead. For the locust shall consume it. Go ahead. Thou shalt plant vineyards. Shall plant vineyards. And dress them. Mm -hmm. But shalt neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes. Go ahead. For the worms shall eat them. What verse is that? Verse 39. Go ahead. Verse 40. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coast, uh -huh. but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil. Because we had sugarcane, we had olive branches, we had a lot of things that was throughout North Central South America as well as in our own land, and we lost it all from the time of slavery and colonialism. Next slide, please. These are the locusts that I was talking about. Okay, let me look. Read verse 41 for us, please. 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters. This is to remember, Moses is talking to the 12 tribes of Israel, the one you call Jews. That's who he's talking to, right? But thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Now, many times people say to us, oh, the white men of Israel, they're the Jews. So we always ask them, well, historically, show us when they went into captivity, meaning slavery. Because World War II, that wasn't slavery. This is slavery. These images, group of slave children born to Daphne. That was the name of the ship, the Daphne. Okay, next slide, please. These are the locusts. Next slide, let me see. Um, okay, listen good to this. When the 12 tribes of Israel came out of Egypt, which is in, where's Egypt? What continent? Africa. The ancient, the Africans are what? What do they look like? Do they look like Chinese people? What do they look like? Right, very dark skin, right? So remember, the Israelites were slave, in slavery in Egypt, in Africa. The modern day Egyptians you see today, which are, are Arabs, they came way during the time of the Crusades, way later, way, way, way later. They're not the original people of that area. Read verse 43 for me, please. Verse 43, the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. The stranger means the other nations that were around us. Go ahead. Shall get up above thee very high and shall what? And thou, meaning the Israelites would what? Shall come down very low. Very low. Watch this. He shall the he lend. is the stranger to other nations. The he is the stranger to other nations, right? He shall lend to thee. He shall lend to thee, the Israelites. And thou shalt not lend to him. You Israelites would not lend to nobody. Go ahead. He shall be the head. The other nations would be the head of society. And thou shalt be the tail. We would be on the bottom of society. What are we reading? The Bible. Chronicled history of what we're living today that no church dares touch. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Let me see what I want. Okay, I want to read verse 46. Watch this. 40, verse 46. Uh-huh. And they. Stop. The they here. The they are the curses that we're reading in the Bible. That's what it's talking about. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. So the sign, the curses will be on us for a sign. Go ahead. And for a wonder. And for a wonder. And upon thy seed forever. You know why I want this word forever? Many times people say the Bible is an old book. Why are you guys reading it? It says that the curses will be on our seed, our children. See those two words? Forever. Meaning a very long time. So, through time, many people think the Bible has no purpose, no relevance today. How wrong they are. The Bible is the most relevant book. Every president has counselors who counsels him on world events, and guess what book they use? The Bible. To know what to do, what not to do. They don't use the Quran. They do not use the Egyptian book of the dead. They use the Bible to find out what nations are doing, what do you do to prevent world war. Next slide. Now, verse 48, watch this. I want you to watch this very good. Read verse 48. Therefore shalt, thy, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Stop. I want you to see this word. Many times we will teach the Bible and they'll say, ah, oh, you guys hate everybody. No, we don't. We're just telling you what the, what? This, this was written over 3,000 years ago. 
None of us wrote this. You understand, Joaquin? We didn't write this. It's there. Look what God said. And this is God speaking through Moses. Read it again. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Come on. Which the Lord shall send against the Lord sent our enemies against us. Go ahead. In hunger. Meaning, if you want food, you better serve your enemies. Go ahead. And in thirst. If you want water, you better serve your enemies. Watch this. And in naked. If you want clothes to cover your naked body, you better serve your enemies. Go ahead. And in want of all things. And want of all things means you want education. You want to know about God. You have to go to your enemies to learn anything. Go ahead. And he. Uh oh shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Remember, Moses is talking to the Jews, the Israelites. If you say the Caucasians of Israel are the Jews, then you have to show historically when did they have yokes of iron on their necks? When? Next slide, picture, I want the pictures. Next slide, next slide. Right, go back, go back. Right, right, right. Yokes of iron. Pop! What are we proving? Our identity. No other race but us fits this. From North, Central, South America, the West Coast of Africa, the Caribbean. These are the things that occurred to us. Iron collar for preventing the escape of slaves. Iron collar for preventing the escape of slaves. You will not find that the Caucasians in Israel, they didn't suffer this. The Chinese didn't go through this. The East Indians did not go through this. The Arabs did not go through this. This is us. You understand what I'm saying, Joaquin? You understand? So what we're saying has nothing to do with hatred at all. It has everything to do with the truth. All we want is the truth. What does God say about the truth? You have to go stay in touch with us, all right? You got our flies, all right? Come over here, young man. You got time? I'm running between meetings. Oh, you're running between meetings. OK. Next slide, please. OK. Watch this. Read verse 49. Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Watch this. From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle fly. If you ever ask yourself, what nation did God send against us? It tells you, as swift as the eagle fly. So what the conquistadors? What was their symbol? What was their animal symbol when Columbus came? It was the eagle. What is the symbol of America? The eagle. So from the time of the Greeks, the time of Rome, they've always used this bird symbol as their symbol. So read it again for us, please. Verse 49. Come up closer, sister. Come up closer. Read verse 49 for me. Verse 49. Uh -huh. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. So what nation did God send against thee from far? Go ahead. From the end of the earth. Uh-huh. As swift as the eagle fly, right. a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. When the conquistadors came, what language did they speak? Nope. They spoke Spanish. You know why I asked you that? Because a lot of times people from El Salvador, South America, Central, they said they always spoke Spanish. That's a lie. You never spoke Spanish. That was a bastard tongue forced on you, like English was forced on. So that's what it means, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. You didn't understand. They forced it on you. Next slide, please. So now, here's some symbols of the eagle, the plural spoon. Uh, from Benny, one. This is America. You have Germany. Uh, this was Rome. Greece. Next slide, please. OK, watch this. Verse 50, please. Verse 50, a nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. I asked early in class, how did the people of North Central South America and the Caribbean become Christians? Do you remember? Do you remember? Young lady, do you know how we became Christians? From the time of the Renaissance, listen good, they forced the white image of Jesus on us, and they, whoever did not accept Christianity, the way the Renaissance, Conquistadors brought it out, they were murdered. They killed our people. This is uh, King Atahualpa in South America. Okay? They burned him alive at the stake if he did not accept Christianity. So, why is that very important to us? Why is that pertinent? Read real quick. I want Matthew 24 and verse 5. I just want to show you something Jesus said. What is this matter? What is the end? It matters a lot. 
Watch what he says. Book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 5. Uh -huh. For many shall come in my name. Watch this. Many shall come in my name. Saying, I am Christ. Saying, I am Christ. Go ahead. And shall deceive many. Have we been deceived? Yeah. Because the Bible says Jesus Christ is what color? White. The Bible says Jesus is what? Black. So we've been deceived. You see, it's so natural to say white. It's so natural from the youth to the older, white. But there's no biblical reference of a Caucasian Jesus. None. You only see it in paintings around the world that the conquistadors set up. Okay? And whoever did not accept this was killed. I'm going to show you that. Uh, Revelation 13, please. Watch this. This horrifies the churches. Matthew, Revelation 13, verse 15. Book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 15. Watch this. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. The image of the beast is the white image of Jesus. I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. Go ahead. That the image of the beast should both speak. It speaks in their movies. They hire actors that look like the white image of Jesus. Go ahead. And cause that as many would not worship. And cause, read that part again. And cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So if you would not worship the image of the beast, which is modern day Christianity, what would happen? You'd be killed. This is what you're seeing here. The Bible is a history book. The book of Revelation is written in parables, but you've got to know history to, un to understand what it's talking about. Okay, next slide, please. Wait, go back, go back. I forgot the picture down here. Well, go back. No, 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 no. I want the one that was just here. Right, stop. Notice, they're burning the Indians alive, burning them. These are Christians doing this, burning us up. Burning our people up alive at the stake if you did not accept the white Jesus. That's what they did. Christianity is the bloodiest religion next to Islam. The bloodiest. That's why when they be talking about the Palestinians and uh, Saudi Arabia, I, I laugh. I'm like, Christianity did more damage to us in the world than Islam did. But both of them are bloody. But Christianity has really destroyed us. Okay, next slide, please. Right there. Right there. Matthew 24 and 5 again. Book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 5. This is why you said Jesus is white. Because this is in all our heads. Let me tell you about Santo Domingo just for a moment. In Santo Domingo, do you know they have an image of the white Jesus that put on every crib over the children? So that when babies open their eyes, this is the first images they see. That's why it's so natural to all of us. White, 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 white. With, with no proof. Read that. Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Have we been deceived as a people? Yes. Have we been deceived? Yes, because the Bible describes Jesus Christ. Two places, Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, as you see on the flyer here, and Daniel chapter 10, verse 5 and 6. It describes Jesus, it says his hair was woolly, and skin looked like it was burned in a furnace. You ever read that before? Let's read it for the young lady. Let's read. Let's read. So that you, I want you to understand, because many times when we go through this, they go, oh, you guys made that up. <laughs> no, we didn't. Let's read it. Read it. The script, description of Jesus. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. The operative word you want is woolly. Wool, wool. You see the word wool? That's the hair that a lot of black sisters don't like. You know why? Because the black women want to perm that hair. I don't like this woolly hair. But it's something to be glorified. It's a glorious hair. Read that again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So Jesus Christ had white, woolly hair. Not straight hair. Woolly. Go ahead. As white as snow. Fully white. Go ahead. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So when you read Genesis, it says the eyes would be red with wine. Come on. And his feet. Now he looks down at Jesus' feet. Go ahead. Like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. If you burn anything in a furnace, what color will it get? Yeah. If you burn, you ever burn rice? Yeah. What color does it get? Dark. dark like what? Dark like brown or dark black? black. Yeah, like black. It gets, so it's, the Bible's describing the Savior. Now go to Daniel chapter 10, verse 5 and 6. So far, if you look up here, these are not described as the image of Jesus in the Bible. 
That's not described. Daniel 10, 5 and 6, please. The book of Daniel, chapter 10 and verse 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen. A uh, linen garment. Whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphat. He had a, a girdle around his waist made of gold. Go ahead. His body also was like the barrel. So the linen he had on was like the barrel. It means green, a green garment. Go ahead. And his face as the appearance of light. He had a glow on his face. But let's get to his color. Go ahead. And his eyes as lamps of fire. Read. And his arms. Now he looks at Jesus' arms. He says his arms. And his feet. And his feet. He could remember they wore sandals. They wore sandals. Go ahead. Like in color. What's that word? Like in color. People say color's not in the Bible. They lie. Like in color to what? To polished brass. Polished brass means brass burned in the furnace. So the Bible describes the Messiah, the Savior, as a black man with woolly hair. Did we make it up? No, we did not. It's biblical, historical. This was written thousands of years ago. Thousands of years ago. You understand that? So if the Bible said he was Caucasian, we would teach it. He's a white guy, but it's not in there. We've done extensive research. It's not in there. So back to Matthew 24 and 5 now. Watch it again. Matthew chapter 24. You go to church? Oh, you going this Sunday? You got this picture in your church? No picture in your church. Oh yeah, what kind of hair he got? Is it a perm? I don't know. Is it straight? It looks straight to me. See that? But it ain't supposed to be straight, right? If you see this brother's hair, it should look like this. That's woolly. That's what it's supposed to look like. Watch this. So how Jesus got a perm? Come on. <laughs> Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So the world has been deceived. Everyone has been deceived. You understand that? So you have a black Jesus in your church. Does your minister teach you what race you are in the Bible? Well, what's, what's your race? That's not a race, that's a color in a crayon box. What race are you? That's not a race, that's a religion. You see? Same, remember I asked you that earlier. It's the same thing. The blacks and Latinos are the most confused people on earth. Why? Because when we were conquered and enslaved, they changed our identities. You understand that? Okay. You understand that? You don't, I don't think you get it yet, but you're about to. Watch this. Go back to Deuteronomy 20. Let me ask you a question, young lady. How did the blacks get to America in, during the time of slavery? How did we get here? By boat. Give me another word for boat. Ships. Watch this. Deuteronomy 20, you find that for me. Slide. Verse 68. Watch this. I want you to read along. Go ahead and read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. You see this word, Egypt? What's your name? Jordan. Jordan? Jordan, what does this word mean? You don't know. What does this word mean? Slavery. It means slavery. Egypt means house of bondage or slavery. Watch this. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt means house of bondage. So back to Deuteronomy 28, 68 now. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Watch this. And Jordan. the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. You see that, Jordan? How did we get to the Americas? With ships. How did y'all get to Spain? With ships. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way Moses spake to us, go ahead. Thou shalt see it no more again. Your homeland, your true identity, you will not see again. Go ahead. And there. Once you got off the slave ships, what would happen to us? Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Oh, what does this word mean? What does this word mean? You. you know, what does this word mean? Right. So, you said, well, not, well I know you say it. I know you probably say it too. We're always taught that God loves everybody, right? Okay. I want you to look at this verse again. Read from and there, and there. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Do you see this word? So there's a problem with what we're taught in society and what the Bible says. The Bible says you will be sold to, it doesn't say your friends or people that love you. You'll be sold to who? Enemies. You'll be sold to who? I didn't make it up. It's in the Bible. 
Watch this. Sold for what? For bond men. Slave men. And bond women. Slave women. Are you a feminist? Good. Thank God. I was about to curse you. <laughs> we went into captivity together. We're going to be delivered together. Understand it. Now, go to the next slide for me. Here's some of the slave ships, okay? Now look, look who, look at the enemies. Ba, 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 ba. You see that? Now, it's not me being racist. I'm reading what the Bible says, now I'm looking at a picture. I have to identify who are we sold to. So it's nothing that we made up. Next slide. Next. You see this, Julie? Moses is talking to the Israelites, the Jews. Did this happen to the white man in Israel? No, it didn't. Now, I'm going to say something. It may be controversial. They are imposters. They have taken your position in society. They've become you, and we have become dogs on earth. We're nothing. That's why when I ask you, who are you? I don't know. Who are you? I don't know. They've become the greatest race on earth now as the Jews. That's who you guys are. What we're reading in the Bible happened to us collectively. And I guarantee you, your minister never taught you this. No. I'm going to tell you why. To become a minister, you know you have to go to theology school, right? In theology school, they're taught not to teach certain scriptures. Just teach feel-good scriptures. You saw the movie uh, Birth of a Nation. Did you see Birth of a Nation? If you get a chance, just take a look at it. And the movie's about Nat Turner. He makes a statement. He was a minister. He said he was taught not to read certain passages. That's what every minister is taught. Don't read certain scriptures. Why? Because if you read things like this, jokes are lying. You, you know what would happen when, when you read this? Doesn't it make you kind of angry? That just happened to us. We're like, no, I've been lied to all my life because I thought the people of the Bible was the Israelis. But I'm like, no, this is us. Look at this. Jokes are lying. Yokes of iron. This happened to us. Photograph, not a drawing. Photograph. You understand? People think, oh, yeah, it's a drawing. You made that up. No, these are photographs. Old, this is an old one. To be sold, to be sold. Slaves, slaves, slaves. So, read that again for me, please. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, mm -hmm. which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Watch this. Until he have destroyed thee. Joaquin, when did the yokes of iron come off our neck? When did they take them off? Here we go. Well, we're still here, right? So give me another meaning. Until he have destroyed thee means what? They took the yokes off our neck when we were what? Destroyed how? Destroyed how? Because physically we're still alive. You ever have a dog? You ever had a dog? Okay. Okay. Do you ever put a collar on a dog? Yeah. You try. You ever get make it obey you? Try to make it do tricks or sit, come, fetch. You have a leash on the dog, right? When do you take the leash off when he does what? When he's totally... When, when he comes. Right. You take the leash off a of dog's neck when he obeys you. And you say, come, fetch, sit down, stay. Then you don't need the leash no more, right? Read that bottom part again. And he... And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. So they took the yoke of iron off our neck when we did what? when we're totally obedient now. We've been destroyed up here. That's why when I ask you the color of Jesus, your first thought was what? White. Your first thought, white. We've been destroyed mentally as a people. That's what the Bible's talking about. That's why you, you said you're the color of a crayon box, black. You said, I don't have a clue. <laughs> so we've been destroyed as a race. You could go to the Asian kid, they'll tell you their history from China, the Tang Dynasty, all of that. They can go back. Caucasians could go back to the Greeks, but the blacks and Latinos, we cannot go back. Oh, we can only go back as far as 1492 or 1620. That's it. We don't know nothing. Because why? We've been destroyed. 
See that word? Destroyed. Totally destroyed. This proves that we are the Israelites. Now, I, I went over this earlier, and I want you to read it. I don't know if you were here. Read Revelation 2 9 for me. I want Joaquin. Did you read this for us, Joaquin? Revelation 2. You can read, Joaquin? Read. Can you read? Okay. The reason I want him to read it so that he doesn't think we made it up as some racist crap. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. Read that loud for me, Joaquin. I know thy works and truth. Wait a minute, take your hat off, Joaquin. Take your hat off. Go ahead. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. Mm -hmm. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Wait. Those that say they are Jews are not. But who are they? Children of Satan. The synagogue of Satan. That's, you said it right. Children of Satan, synagogue, same thing. So what is Jesus calling those people that claim to be Jews and are not the Jews? The devil walking. That's what he did. I didn't write that. Wait, I want to show Jordan. First line. Blasphemy. Blasphemy of them which say that are Jews and not but are the synagogue of Satan. So what are they? Yeah. I didn't write that. So if I, when we on the street, you ever see us on the street teach? You ever heard of this? Okay, sometimes we go on the street teach. When we read that, you know what the Christians say? Oh, you're racist. You hate me. No, just read in the Bible. That's what Christ said. Jesus said that. So it has nothing to do with our personal feelings. You understand that, Jordan? And I guarantee you, Jordan, your minister never read that to you. He's paid not to read that to you. You understand what I'm saying? He's a paid agent of the state. I'm going to say it again. Ministers, Christian ministers, are paid agents of the state. They are taught not to teach certain scriptures to their, to their congregants. Why? So that way you will never come together collectively. You will never work together. You never really love each other. But you'll always love this guy. You'll always love this guy. Right there, right there, right there. You understand? So now, what you got next for me? What, you got something to do? No, uh, yeah, yo, yeah. I was going to ask you, where would El Salvador fall? El Salvador. El Salvador is between Colombia. What, hey, what is El Salvador? Central America? Central America. Central America. So that would be Zebulon, right there. From Colombia, Guatemala to Panama. Right there. You got that? So that's the tribe of Zebulon. That's who you are. And you come from America or the Caribbean island? Caribbean. Part American, part Caribbean. You're not, you're, where's your father from? Virginia. Virginia. Oh, God. Okay. So Virginia would be this one here, number one. Judah. That's the Negroes. Okay. But we're one race. Divided up. You understand? Give me the next slide. You see this church? You can look it up. Write this word down. Write this down. The Varanet. This church was set up during the Dark Ages. You heard of the Dark Ages? Yeah. You see it, you can see some pictures on these walls, right? You see some pictures? I'm going to zoom in for you. Next. Ah, oh, here's one of the pictures. Look what color the angels are. Look what color the resurrected Israelites are, the Jews. Do you see this? They're black. This was painted during the Dark Ages. Next slide. Oh, look. Here are the prophets. The prophets and the apostles. Look at what color they are. You see that? Joaquin, Jordan, black people. Painted when? During the Middle Ages, or sometimes called the Dark Ages. Next slide. Oh, here's a picture of King David in his old age. King David. Look, do you see his complexion? Black. The prophets, Abraham, Isaac, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Next slide, please. Uh, here's judgment with the angels. You have people in chains here, light of complexion. Look at the hand of God right here. You see the hand of God, black. We didn't make this up. This is a church in Romania. Next slide. Next slide. Oh, this is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and these are the 12 sons, the 12 tribes of Israel in their laps. John the Baptist is here. 
Uh, this is uh, Mary, Archangel Gabriel. Next slide. Adam and Eve. Look, Adam, Eve. Adam, Eve. Adam, Eve. Look what color they are, Adam and Eve. Being pushed out of the garden. What color are they? They're black. These are ancient relics that the, the Renaissance, what they did was paint up all the old paintings, hide it. Next slide. Look at this. King David holding a Bible. And this is the prophet Moses. Okay? This is a book from the icon. You might have some of these books in your school library. You never know. You have to look for it. But these are the things that have been hidden from our people, hidden from students. Next slide. This is uh, Gabriel and Michael. Next slide. Go to the next one. I want to show them something. What a man. That's Samson. Uh, this is Abraham and Isaac. Ezekiel. I mean, Elijah, I'm sorry. Next slide. Write the name of this book down. Dang, Joaquin, you got something to do? Yeah, we're going to Oh, you got to be to work with one? Okay, Joaquin. Uh, just take the name of this book down. It's entitled uh, Russian I Not that. That's not the name of the book up there. The name of the book is Russian Icons by Father Vladimir Ivanov. Vladimir is V L A D I M I R. Ivanov is I V A N O F F. The book goes for about $100. In the book, they show you the Greek Orthodox Church along with the Vatican. They hire Greek Orthodox men to whitewash all the black images. You see Jesus right here? You see he's black, right? But in the front, look what they're doing. They're making white paintings. These are the images you see throughout the world now. These images. That they, it's a conspiracy. You understand what I'm saying, Watch. You understand what I'm saying, Julie? So what I'm showing you is, and I'm showing you with proof, not my own feelings. So you got to go, Waki? Yeah. Okay, I'll let you go. It's been nice meeting you. Stay in touch, all right? Don't forget your, your hat. So now, Jordan, you got a little more time. Okay, good. Do you have any questions for us? Not right now. Okay, give me the next slide. Ah, uh, Job 9.24. Okay, since Jordan is here, I'm going to turn to the scriptures, and I'm going to have you read it along with us. You don't got to read out loud. He'll read out loud. Job chapter 9 and verse 24. Okay, it's highlighted already. Read that for us, Job 9, 24, please. Book of Job chapter 9 and verse 24. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So who's ruling the earth, Jordan? Who's ruling the earth? What is the most powerful country on the planet, Jordan? Do you think it's China? What nation runs all the other countries? There's no such thing as a Christian nation. Okay, let me do, do it this way. If, let's say Russia does not do what America says, right? America will put an embargo on them, right? Meaning you can't buy or sell, correct? So, who's the most powerful nation? America. You understand what I'm saying? Read it again. Verse 24, the yes. earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Right. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. You see this Jordan where it says he covereth the faces of the judges thereof? The judges of the earth are God, Christ, the angels, and the Israelites. The 12 tribes of Israel. But notice it says he covers the faces. You see that part? Go back to the slide. This is what it means. He covers the faces. He paints them, he changes them from this to this. You understand what's happening? So your history has been covered with this, meaning whitewashed. Now you don't know who you are. When you think of Mary or Jesus, you think of someone white. You think of God, you think of someone white. You never see yourself. You never see yourself when this is your records, your history. You understand? Okay. Give me the next slide. Next slide. Okay. This is more how they cover the faces of the judges. In the book called the Borges, they show the sketches of Leonardo da Vinci of Caesar Borgia. This is Caesar Borgia. He became the new image of Jesus from the 1400s on up till today. This is Caesar Borgia. But if you ask anybody, who is this? They'll say Jesus. 
Who is this? Jesus. But it's not Jesus. You understand? Next slide. Okay. The Last Supper. You, heard, you read the history in the Last Supper, right? Christ had how many apostles? Yes, he had 12 apostles. What do you mean, women? Men. Very good. Here at the Last Supper, this is painted by Leonardo da Vinci. The 12 apostles are sitting with him, right? But look. Here's a woman here. Here's a woman here. So something's wrong. Number one, Jesus ain't supposed to look like this. There should be no women as the apostles there, but they have women there. When Leonardo da Vinci did the painting, he put Caesar Borgia as Jesus, his sister Lucrezia in the picture, Lucrezia. And their father, Rodrigo, is in this painting too. Rodrigo Borgia is here, here, and here. He put him in there three times. These are the rulers of Rome during the Renaissance. You with me so far, John? Next slide. Oh. Sistine Chapel. This is supposed to be who? Uh, huh? That was Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. Okay. You won't. You won't. This is supposed to be the creation with God creating. Who is this supposed to be? Adam. Adam. I'm going to show you something about Adam. In Genesis 2 7, for joy. The first man ever created. Genesis 2, verse 7. You're going to read along with us. Read that for us. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. Uh -huh. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. What color is the dust of the ground, Jordan? Brown. Yes, brown. Like you and me, right? So this is false. So the Bible is proving that the first man created was what type of man? Right. Or what you would normally say a black man, right? But in, in society today, they said they show paintings of Adam as a white man. That's to give you that low self-esteem so that you'll never rise to any importance in earth. You're really nobody. Because you have what? Because you're not taught that you have any importance when you're the greatest people on earth. This is your ancestor. Adam, it's supposed to be a black man. It's supposed to be black. God is supposed to be black. But this painting here is really Rodrigo Borges. Rodrigo Borges, the father of Caesar Borges. That's who it really is. Next slide, please. It's supposed to be in the garden with Adam and Eve. This is all Caucasian. This is all crap. This is all false. Sistine Chapel, crap. Next slide. Look at this side. I want you to pay, look, what do you notice about this picture? This is the devil, and this is the angel. What do you notice? Yeah, and what about the devil? Right. This is a famous painting in Santo Domingo to this day. This is why when you meet many Spanish, I wish they were still here. They have a, 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 a disdain for us. Why? It's not because they, we did anything to them. It's from a youth that they're taught everything good is white, everything bad is black. From, it's taught from children. So you see that, right? Questions? I of the tribe of Levi. The Haitians, see the word Haitians there? That's the tribe Moses came out of, Levi. That's what their real name is. So, Moses was black. You know that. If I asked you to prove it, where would you go? Where? Okay, I'm gonna show you. Give me Exodus 4 and 6, and then give me Numbers 12 with me. You have any pictures of Moses? Show me Moses, right here. Medieval paintings, okay, of the prophet and king, King David, was of the tribe of Judah and the prophet Moses of the tribe of Levi. They're both Israelites. Both of them are Israelites. In the Bible, a short term for them is the Jews. So according to history, 
Well, I wouldn't even say history. Archaeology is a better word. They were black. Now let's see what the Bible says about the color of Moses. Give me Exodus chapter 4 and verse 6, please. Book of Exodus chapter 4, verse 6. Uh -huh. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. So the first miracle, God told Moses, put your hand into your bosom. Put it into your garment. Go ahead. And he put his hand into his bosom. Uh -huh. And when he took it out. And when Moses took his hand out. Behold, his hand was leprous as snow. His hand was leprous as snow. What would have been a miracle if Moses was already white and his hand turned white? That's not a miracle. Proving you that Moses was not white. Watch the next part. Go ahead. And, and he said, put thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. Uh -huh. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. So now he took his hand out, it turned back as his other flesh, meaning the melanin came back. What color was Adam? We just read that in Genesis 2 and 7. Right. What's your name? Carol. Carol. Nice to meet you, Carol. We're going over some history about our true identity. Okay, so now I'm going to show you something about Moses' sister, Miriam. When you watch the movie The Ten Commandments, they always show Moses, Miriam, as Caucasians. Numbers chapter 12. Let's start at verse, um, I think, 6. I want to get to the point. Verse 10. Verse 10? Okay. Numbers chapter 12, verse 10. Now we're going to read about Moses' older sister, Miriam. Watch this. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. Uh -huh. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. So when God got angry with Miriam, he cursed her. And it said she became leprous, white as snow. This is what the Bible says. So if the Bible says the curse was leprosy, meaning she became white, how come all the paintings in the world, movies, everybody's white? When the Bible says, no, she was cursed to make to look white. We don't? White as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead. Wait a minute. So when she lost her melanin, her pigment, her brother said, Let her not be as one dead. Go ahead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. Like when a baby's born, it comes out like me. When I came out as a baby, you would have thought I was a little white baby because I had no color on me. That's why they always say, look at the baby's ears. You'll know what complexion it will be as it gets older. So in the Bible, it's telling you that the curse upon Mary was that her melanin was taken. Then later on, you read it came back seven days later. Is that the people of the Bible, Israelites, the Jews, they were people of color, like you and I. That's what I want y'all to see. This is what's not being taught to you in school, church, whatever community groups you go to, together, you're not taught. I ask you a question. Okay, what's your name again? Yeah. Okay. What is your racial identity? Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough, I was the same way. Watch this. Give me Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. I'm going to show you something. Very important. Because there were some other students here earlier, Latino. They had the same thing as you. They were like, Latino? I asked them, what does that mean? I don't know. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. Mm -hmm. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass is master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. So the prophecy is that. The Israelites in time will forget who they are. God says an ox and an ass, which are two dumb animals, they know who they are. They know their own. He said, but my people won't consider. They don't know. This is why I always ask, who are you? Who are you? I don't know. You ever heard the term black, right? They call it sometimes black people. Black is not a race. You will not find a map that says the black race is located here. Black is a color in a crayon box. It's a mockery. Because they don't want to tell us who we really are. So now, we went through earlier about the color of Jesus Christ. You heard about Christ, right? Ever heard about Jesus Christ? What color is Jesus? You sure? What color is Jesus? Okay, very good. I like her answer. She's I don't know. Give me that. So now, here in front of you, 
we got some scriptures here. So that you can read along with us here. Like this one is Revelation. Read that for Revelation 1, 14. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So the operative word, Kim, is wool. Your hair is woolly hair. You understand? Go ahead. As white as snow. So he had fully white woolly hair. Go ahead. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Go ahead. And his feet like unto fine brass. His feet like unto fine brass. As if they burned in a furnace. So, Kim, if you burn anything, I don't know if you cook. I try to cook. If you burn anything in a furnace, what color does it get? The Bible says Jesus Christ's feet looked like they were burned in a furnace. When I was a kid, there was a joke. The, court, the white kids would say to me, you look like God left you in the oven too long. And for years, I was, it would hurt me. But when I got older and read the Bible, Jesus Christ looked like God burned him in a furnace. Meaning he's a black man with woolly hair. But for some reason, we're not taught this, we're taught this. This is what we're taught. This is what the lies that we're taught, you see that? We're taught lies. So we're going over the description of Jesus Christ. Wait, it's not right there. We just read this. Give me the one, Daniel, verse 6. I want verse 6. Daniel chapter 10, verse 6. Daniel chapter 10, verse 6. Right. His body also was like the barrel. Daniel 10, 6, right here. Y'all can read along with us. Right there. Go ahead. The word barrel means green. Read it again. His body also was like the barrel. He had a linen garment. Go ahead. And his face as the appearance of light. He had a glow on his face, go ahead. And his eyes as lamps of fire. He drunk wine, go ahead. And his arms and his feet. His arms and his feet. Like in color. The word color is in the Bible. To polished brass. And in grass burned in the furnace. So that's another location where the Messiah is described as a black man. Woolly hair, skin like it was burned in a furnace. But they're not taught that. We're not taught that in the world. We're taught this. So can you, what's your name, young man? Javon, Javon and Kreva. Can you give me any biblical reference of Jesus being Caucasian with straight, thin, yellow hair? <laughs> you ever see some of our sisters, we like our, our women, some of our sisters like their hair dyed yellow. You ever see that? Mary J. Blige, who we all love. You ever see that, Kara? Yellow hair on our sisters, they dye their hair yellow. Yeah. What does the Bible say about yellow hair? Watch this, get Leviticus 13. This is more proof that the Israelites were never Caucasian people. Leviticus 13 and 30. I'm going to put it in the middle of you two so y'all can both look on it. Leviticus 13 and 30. Read that. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 30. Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a dry scalp, even a leprosy upon the head or beard. So leprosy of the hair is yellow, thin hair. Yellow, thin hair is yellow, straight hair. That's what the Bible says. But then we'll see movies of Jesus having yellow, thin hair. You ever see these movies? It's like, wait a minute. Something's contradicting from the Bible. All these movies are false. All these Christian churches that are put out throughout the world are false. Because none of them are teaching Jesus had, Christ had white woolly hair. His skin burned at the first. Nobody teaches that. They show him, show me the pictures of Jesus now. Thank you. This is what the world sees Jesus as. The Bible says this is leprosy. It's a curse, a plague. Remember, Miriam was cursed to be leprous. It said her skin became white as, white as snow. Do you see this? So this could not be Jesus. In your libraries, write this time down. The Borgias by Marion Johnson. She describes the paintings of Leonardo da Vinci. Get a book. Write it down. Get a pen and paper. Write it down. The Borgias. That way you know we didn't make it up. This is why we always tell people when, when we teach, bring a Bible, read along with us so that you know we didn't make it up. Because I guarantee you, like when you go to church on Sunday, Jordan, you don't, your preacher won't take his time with you guys and go, go read this verse, read that. He'll give you a sermon, a song and a dance, and he'll say, quiet, sing! And everybody's just singing. But you learn nothing. We all grew up in church. We learn nothing. So, the Borgias by Marion Johnson, she shows you the sketches of that Leonardo da Vinci did. 
of Caesar Borgias. This is Caesar Borgia here. I'm going to show you the sketches in a minute. This is him here. On Showtime, Showtime, on Netflix, Showtime, there's a movie called The Borgias. That's where they get it from. Right here. They have Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci in the movie, Michelangelo, but what they don't show you is that Leonardo da Vinci used Caesar Borgia as the model of Jesus. Show me the sketches now. Show me the slide with the sketches. Here, Leonardo da Vinci sketches. This is Caesar Borgia. You would call him Jesus today. These are his sketches from the book, the book Borgia's. These are his sketches. And they show you, they tell you in the book it is the age of Antichrist. As age of artisans. Those are the terms they use. Age of Antichrist, age of artisans. So they show you Le uh, Leonardo sketch Caesar as the new Jesus Christ. And from 1453 on up, that image is worldwide now. If I asked you who that was, you would have said Jesus five minutes ago. Anyway, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Everybody says Jesus. But, but when we show you a black image, like the one on your flyer, excuse my language, but you say, who that nigga is? Sure. Who that? Nobody would know that this is Jesus Christ. And it would be rejected. Why? During the time of slavery, we were taught to do what with each other? During the time of slavery, we were taught to do, how were we taught to deal with each other? How did the, what? How did the white man teach us to deal with each other? The white man taught us to be connected. The white man taught us that? Okay, during the time of slavery. You ever read a book called Willie Lynch? Willie Lynch, it costs five dollars. It's the prototype of uh, uh, the writings of Willie Lynch, William Lynch, how to deal with a slave. They said pit male against female, young against old. Yes. They taught us to control ourselves, control each other for one man. Yes, exactly. Yes, it was a self-hate. During the time of slavery, they taught us to hate each other because they taught us this. Could you imagine this? I just want to think of this. You have a plantation with 300 slaves. The male slaves alone would be six feet, 250 pounds, all muscle. You didn't have fat slaves walking because you had to work all day. Everybody's fit and trim. How could a slave master, he might have five white guys with him, control three? hundred slaves on one plantation. How can they do it? If they got guns, how many bullets does a gun hold? Like a rifle. Let's say a rifle can hold how many shots? Maybe two before you reload? A rifle. How could they control 300 slaves? With a total of 20 bullets. Because they didn't have the Gatling gun yet. How could they do it? I'm going to show you how they did it. Yeah. This is how they did it. If you saw your slave master as Jesus, the son of God, you would never lift up a hand against him. You would always give homage to him, and you would turn against each other first. This is what has happened to us historically. This is why the term, you see Black Lives Movement, right? Black Lives Matter. We can never come together collectively. We're always divided, whether it's racially divided, religiously divided, okay? Gender, we're divided. But the Bible teaches us that we're one race, the 12 tribes of Israel. The Bible teaches us we're one race, the 12 tribes of Israel. Until we come back to that, we will never truly unite as a people. Never. This is what the secret is. I'm going to show you something else. Psalms 83. Give me that. Psalms 83. Because what I said may seem somewhat radical. She's thinking, I don't know about this. What the hell is he saying? I'm going to show you something. Now, were you here when we went over slavery in the Bible? Okay. Were you here when I showed you slavery in the Bible? No. Okay, you were here. Deuteronomy 28. Before we go to Psalms 83, let me show you slavery in the Bible. I'm showing you our slavery. And what I'm about to show you will identify your race in the Bible. Someone, come, come. Can you help me here? Deuteronomy 20. Find 28 chapter. Find it. 20th chapter. You don't have a Bible. What's your name again? Javon. Kira Javon Jordan. Okay. I'm trying to remember your names. 
Deuteronomy 28, please. Verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Now, I'm going to help you out here. We just came out of Egypt, out of Africa. We just came out of Egypt in Africa. God tells Moses, warn my people, the 12 tribes of Israel, if they break my law, this is what's going to happen to them. Read verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So we're going to look at some of the curses that came on the 12 tribes of Israel. Verse 32, I'm going to get to the point, please. Verse, Verse 32. 32. Wait, let's get it prayer. I want them to read along. Right here. Come on. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. This part right here, y'all see this? Another people? That means you'll be, your sons and daughters will be given to another race of people. Did that happen to us? Were we given, our sons and daughters given to another race? During the 1600s? Huh? Okay, read on. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. If you ever see movies, Roots, Mandingo, 12 Years a Slave, they show you children taken from their mothers, sent to other continents, other countries, other states. That's what it means when it says, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Go ahead. And there shall be no might in thine hand. No economic or military might. This means we would not be united as a race because we would have no might to unite again. You understand? The only thing that can unite us, let me give you the secret, is that book right there. Once we all accept that we're the Israelites, that we're the people of the book, that will unite us. But until then, she will be, what's your religion? Baptist, you will be what? What's yours? Okay, but these things is not in the Bible. God never said about that in church. Some of us will be, some women will be feminists. Some of us will be Catholic. Some of us will be Rastafarians. So we, we will never unite. We can only unite when we go by what this book says to us, the Israelites. Now watch this, verse 48, please. Verse 48, y'all got it right there. Or you can read along with us up here. Verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Here, you see that word right there? Now the reason I always pause on this word because when we use it on the street, people say, you're filled with hate, you're a racist. I said, no, we're not. This is what the book says. This book was written 3,000 years ago. It has nothing to do with our, any racial hatred. Before we came into truth, most of us had white women. But when we learned the Bible, we were like, wait a minute. The Bible says, read again. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. The Bible says they're our enemies. Go ahead. Which the Lord shall send against us. So who us. sent them against us, Kara? Lord. The Lord. Go ahead. In hunger. So if you want food, Kara, you gotta serve your enemies. Go ahead. And in thirst. If you want water, Kara, you gotta serve your enemies. And in nakedness. If you want clothing, Kara, you gotta serve your enemies. Go ahead. And in want of all things. Want of all things mean if you want education, you want religion. You gotta go to your enemies for it. You have to go to the same man that oppressed you and destroyed you if you want anything. That's what this school is about. Your enemy sets us up, and they teach you what they want you to know to keep you submissive, divided, not united. Read on. And until and he, uh, and and he, he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. Now, y'all see this here, Kiara? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Let's show the visual of it, please. He shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck, until he have destroyed me. We've been destroyed mentally, spiritually, psychologically. So, what is this proof? Let me ask you this, Karen. In Israel, there's a group of people that says they're the Jews, right? Did this happen to them? No, it didn't. So, again, what we're saying is biblical. It has nothing to do with any racial hatred, any little feelings we got against people. It had, it's all biblical truth. You understand that, Jordan? This happened to us. Read that verse again. And he shall put what? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. When did the yokes of iron come off? During the emancipation, we were what? Destroyed. 
destroyed mentally. Because we're physically here. So how did they destroy us? When, the young, when they took this off, we became Christians. We became, what else they, these uh, blacks, West Indians, Haitians. They, they taught us different nationalities. All of these things were ruses to keep us divided. Different cultures, different religions, so we could never come together again. The latest one in the 60s, was Gloria Standard set up, was the feminist movement. When the Black Panthers rose up, they said, hey, we gotta get together, and because the establishment is against us. Gloria Standard under the CIA said, we can divide the women from the men, teach the women feminism. The black woman, you know what she did? She separated from us. And said, no, we're not with you. Then guess what? All the revolutionary stuff. <laughs> the same thing's happening again today. The se it's the same regurgitation of an age-old movement. Divide them, conquer them, keep them submissive. So we've been destroyed as a race. So now, if I'd asked any of you, like I just did, I asked you, did this happen to the Israelis in Israel? You said no. So what does this prove? They are not the biblical Jews. We prove Jesus was black, correct? He had white woolly hair, correct? The people of Jesus, it said they would have yokes of iron on their necks until they were destroyed. This is us. How do we come to the Americas? How do we get to Haiti? How do we get to Brazil? How? Do we take a plane? How? On what? On boat. Give me another word for boat. Ships. Watch this. I want verse 68. Please. Go ahead. Verse 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Jordan, do you know, remember what this word Egypt means? Yeah. What? Slavery. It means slavery. Very good. The word Egypt is Greek. It means slavery. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Wait a minute. You are going to slavery with ships. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way Moses spoke unto us. Thou shalt see it no more again. You will not see your homeland again. Go ahead. And there, and there, once you got off the slave ships, Kiara, what would happen? Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Oh, there's that word again, Kiara. It's right there again. I'm sorry, but it's there. Go ahead. For bond men, meaning slave men, and bond women. Slave women. Go ahead. And no man shall buy you. No man shall buy you means no man shall save you. Sojourner Truth tried to deliver us, redeem us. She failed. Harry Tubman, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey. Uh, the Haitian Revolutionary, what's his name? Uh, Toussaint Overture. Toussaint Overture, they all failed, put to death. No man can buy us from this condition of slavery. So it says the real Jews, the Israelites, would go into Egypt, meaning slavery again with what, Kim? Ships. Ships. Here's another question. Did the white men in Israel go into slavery with ships? Show us the images, show us the pictures now. Show us the pictures, because right here, right here. This is what we want. These are the ships. Once we got off the ship, Kara, look, to be sold, a cargo of 94 prime healthy Negroes. This is a Latin word that means black. That's all, it's a Latin word that means black. They sold us in slavery once we got off the ships. The Bible is the greatest history book on earth. The Bible is your history. You're not gonna find this history in the Quran. You're not gonna find it in the Egyptian book of the dead. You're not going to find it anywhere but in the book you've had in every church. But nobody reads it. My grandmother, all, they all got church Bibles. They don't read the book. They just go, Jesus, Jesus, that's all they do. Grandma, aunties, they all talk about, so, did you know slavery is in the Bible? They ain't in the Bible, boy, shut up. That's what they say. But you got to take your time going through it slowly. And I, it will identify your ancestors, who you are. Who are you? Who are you? According to the Bible, who are you? Who are you according to the Bible? Who are you according to the Bible? That's what the Bible says. We can prove that. That's why, believe it or not, when they say, hey, we want you guys to come on Channel 7 or Channel 2, they say, but you're not allowed to read the Bible. So then what am I going on there for? They said you might offend people. But the book is our book. We have to read it. They said, we don't want you to read it. Just talk. Don't read it, though. Why? Because that is the book that can unite our people, that will unite our people. Understand? Give me another slide. If you have any questions, feel free. You got questions. Your mind, you seem troubled sometimes when I look. Yes. It's 
inaccurate. Let me explain to you something about the DNA test. Uh, white people say, some white people, Jews, they say that their DNA is from King David. In order to say you are descended from King David, what would you need to prove that? You would need King David's what? DNA on file. So it's totally inaccurate. Totally inaccurate. You would need, the, or for example, let's say, oh, there's a video. You can look up DNA right there, because you're going to forget. DNA hoax. Just type that in on YouTube. DNA hoax. And they show you the fallacy of one young lady. She had an origin of 26 different nations, and the, the host was saying it's totally ridiculous. If, if let's, say, let's say I say that you're Chinese, hypothetically. You're Chinese, I'll give you. You're Irish, and you are Arab. Now, I'm saying that you're the Israelites, right? But DNA, they'll say, they'll check your DNA along with, what did I say, you're Chinese, Chinese person, oh, she's Chinese, see? Or Irish, oh, she's Irish. You would need the history or the DNA of the people to compare it to. But if they teach us we're not the Israelites, they never, DNA will never come back and say they're the Israelites. They're not gonna do it. Psalms chapter 83, verse one. Wait, 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 I want them to read along with us because they're going to think that you made that up over there. Where's Psalms at? Oh, right back this way. So, 78, 83, and let's start at verse 3, shall we? Verse 3. Uh -huh. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Read verse, first of all, verse, verse 2. two. two For lo, Thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Right. They, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Let me ask you a question. Have we been cut off from being one race? Have we been divided? Okay, remember it said they're taking crafty counsel, right? That's what it said? Let's name some crafty counsel that divided us. Nationality, they'll teach you, for example, they'll say Haitian, West Indian, American black. So now, we will argue about that. So that divided us. Then they say, they might be clever enough to figure that that was a ruse. So they say, Give, make him Baptist, Catholic, Rastafari. Now we argue about that. We can never, come back cohesively as a race. Read a part about crafty counsel again. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Another crafty counsel. They said, give them politics. Now you're a Democrat. She's Republican. You're conservative. All three of you are arguing. You will never come together because you have three different points of view. Read that verse again. Crafty counsel. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. We have the hidden ones. Go ahead. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. They cut us off from being a nation of people. God's nation of people. Go ahead. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So you see the reason? That the name of Israel will be no more in your remembrance. That's why you say black, you say Haitian, you say American. You don't notice you're Israel, but we just prove you're Israel. The greatest conspiracy on earth has occurred to our people. We are, the, we are the people of the book. Now, I had another question. Oh, you asked about uh, Jerusalem. Give me Luke 21, 24, get that. How do, a lot of us went into Africa, we went to Africa, right? How do we get into Africa? Luke 21, verse 24, we'll explain. Luke chapter 21. But I want them to get it. That way they don't think we made it up. What's your name, young man? Tristan. Tristan? Nice to meet you, Tristan. Luke 21, 24, please. Did you get it? 21, verse right there. Go ahead, read that. Verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. We fell by the edge of the sword, 70 AD, by the hand of Rome. Rome destroyed us. Go ahead. And shall be led away captive into all nations. That's the slave trade. We went into slavery in all nations. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. So who's in Jerusalem, according to that? Who did Jesus say would take over Jerusalem? The Gentiles. The Gentiles. 
So the people in Jerusalem are not the Jews. That's what the Bible said. Now watch this. This is going to hurt your feelings, Kira. Let me show you who the Jews are in, Jer in Jerusalem who claim to be the Jews. And I want Kira to look, read along. Mm, Revelation 2, verse 9. Right there. Read that for us. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. Listen good. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Who is those that say they're Jews and are not? Christ is there who? So did I, did I write that? No. So what, you see that? So for example, if I, when we read this on the street or say it, you know what people say to us? That we're racist. And we're not. Like I said, half of us had white girlfriends at one time. We ain't got to come home. We got to But the Bible says they're the synagogue of Satan. That's Jesus Christ speaking. But nobody reads the Bible. Nobody reads the Bible. You understand? You don't understand, but you will. Kara, do you understand? Okay, help me out. What? I want to take you further. What? Give me all your questions. I love questions. Do you think that's fair, what Jesus said? Do you think it's right? The Son of God tells you they're the synagogue of Satan. Do you accept what the Son of God says, or you give him the finger? You accept it. That's what being born again is about, accepting what the Bible says like a child. The Bible says the Israelites were going to slavery on ships. Did that happen to us? You know why I'll start there? Because people say, how do you know the Bible's a true book? Okay. This was written over 3,000 years ago. Moses told us, not only would you go on slavery on ships, you would have yokes of iron on your neck. Your sons and daughters would be taken from you. Did it happen? It happened to us. We didn't go into slavery? Yes. Did we go on slavery on ships? Did we have yokes of iron on our neck? So the Bible is a true. You can't look at that and go, oh, shoot, this is written in the Bible, and then go, how do you know it's true? Prophecies came to pass, right? They happened. The Bible is true, whether you want to believe it or not. It's written. You go, you've been in the school all this time. How many years you been in? Is your first? How many years? First. How about you? Okay, first semester. You've been in high school, junior high, like myself, and we never. What I'm showing you here, you've never been taught that. That is in the Bible. You know about slavery. But you didn't know it was recorded in the Bible. You didn't know Jesus spoke about it, right? So now the decision will be yours, whether you condemn the Bible or you accept the Bible. Because if that's true, that we went into slavery on ships, then there's other things it says that's going to happen too. So it talks about World War III. Did you know that? Woo! Give me that. Zechariah. Uh, 14, order one and second Peter. Whichever one's good, the better one. Which one you like, Cap? Oh, Zechariah. Zechariah 14, 12. You know, can you find Zechariah? Zechariah 14, 12. So again, Kiara, what we're saying has nothing to do with any hatred against any race at all. It's strictly biblical. If it wasn't in the Bible, we wouldn't teach it. We wouldn't say it, but it's there. Okay? It's not like we sat down and said, let's just make some racist crap up and just talk about people. No, it has nothing to do with that. Instead of, oh shoot, it's there in the Bible. Dang. Zechariah chapter 14. What verse? 12. Verse 12. Read that. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord shall smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, mm. and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. What type of weapon do you think Zechariah is talking about that can take the flesh off your body while you're still standing? That's not an arrow, and it's not a gun. Huh? <laughs> Only a nuclear weapon can do that. It says your eyes would. Read it again, because I can't quote. What did it say? What did it say? 
Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. So your skin is gone. Go ahead. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. Your eyes are consumed out of the eye sockets. Go ahead. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And your tongue is gone. What can do that? Something powerful. A weapon can only do that. Watch this. Get um, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 in the New Testament. I'll show you the Old Testament and New Testament saying the same thing. America and Russia has the largest nuclear armaments on the planet, those two countries. Those weapons are not there for no reason. They are going to be used. 2 Peter 3, verse, is it 10? Verse 10. Verse 10? I'm guessing. I'm, I want you to find it for me. Verse 10. Okay. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, mm -hmm. in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. You know what the great noise is? Boom! Go ahead. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What can melt the elements? These are elements. These are elements. What can melt the elements with fervent, meaning the hottest heat? Go ahead. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The reason I wanted that is because just like the prophecies of slavery came to pass, the prophecies about thermonuclear war shall come to pass. This is what we're always being warned about. Okay? Take this book seriously. Don't take it as a joke. Stop wasting your time in these Christian churches because what we're showing you, they've been taught not to teach you. Okay? They're agents of the state, believe it or not. Theolo theologians are paid agents, meaning what? Don't teach certain things. Just read, love scriptures, feel good, make them feel cozy. Okay? That's what you're taught. How do I know? The elder that taught me went to theology school. So he informed me. He said, listen, don't go. He said, I'm going to tell you what they do. They make you read certain John 3.16. You heard it, John 3.16. You quote it for me. God so loved the world that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. There you go. See, everybody knows that. But that's just a little bit in the Bible. What about the slavery? Hmm? They didn't teach you that. You couldn't even quote it because you never heard it before. What about Jesus being black like we just read earlier today? Nobody, nobody knows this stuff. We are the greatest people on the earth, but we've never been taught that. We've been taught that we are subhuman. And when I say subhuman, I'm talking about blacks, Native Americans, West Indian. That's subhuman terms. Because there's no race called black on the planet. You will never find history books, the black race. You're not going to find it. Mm -hmm. West Indian. You know what the word West Indian means? Mm -hmm. Are you West Indian? Sure. West Indian? Sure. Not from the Caribbean? Oh, from the Caribbean, right? From the Caribbean, right? Okay, West Indian. What does it mean? Born in West Indian. The word Indian comes from what? The word Indian. Indian. What does it mean? It comes from a Latin word, Indios, which means slave. West Indian, you're saying you're a West slave. But you're not taught that. You're taught to glorify in something that has no historic accuracy. You understand that? So that's why Psalm 83 talks what it says about taking crafty counsel against God's people. You understand? Daniel 7 and 9. Where are you at? Daniel's right there. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. I want y'all here to read along. Go ahead. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. So it describes God as the hair of his head like the pure wool. You ever hear people say, God don't have a body? You ever hear people say that? They say, God has no body. Read it again. And the Ancient of Days did sit. Stop. In order to sit, you have to have what? Body. A body. Go ahead. Whose garment? Wait, the word garment means clothes. In order to have clothes on, you have to have a what? Body. A body. Go ahead. Was white as snow. And the hair of his head. The hair on his head, the hair on his head, the hair on his head, the hair on his head. Let's see if it was straight and stringy, go ahead. Like the pure wool. That's God Almighty. That's what the Bible says. But everybody rejects what the Bible says. That's why we always say all the religions on the earth are false. Every one of them. 
Nobody will read the Bible and teach what it accurately says about the color of Christ, the type of hair he had. Nobody. Let me ask you this. We went over it earlier. You ever see women with yellow hair, blonde hair, blonde hair? You ever see it? What does the Bible say about blonde hair? Blonde is French for what? The word blonde is French for yellow. Give me that real quick. And the reason I'm touching on it to show you many of the inaccuracies that you've been taught. Revelation, I mean Levit Leviticus 13 and 30. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 30. Did y'all read that with us early? Here? You read it. Okay. I just want to make sure that nobody thinks we're making any racial sentiments that cannot be substantiated in the Bible. Go ahead. Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a dry scalp, even a leprosy upon the head or beard. So yellow thin hair is leprosy upon the hair or the beard. Yellow thin hair, which is yellow straight hair, we call blonde today, which is French, God says it's leprosy. But we're not taught that in any church or any educational establishment. Our sisters will see women with yellow hair and dot their hair. You see it. I see it throughout the world. Mary J. Blige, we all love. Name some more. Beyonce. Beyonce. Name some more. Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. What's Nas's? Uh, Cadiz. Cadiz. And all of them, not all of them, but many of our women, they adore yellow, thin hair. Had they been taught from youth, that's leprosy, none of them would ever do that. None of them. Okay, thank you. Not, so we've all been miseducated about the word of God. Okay, so give me a picture of Jesus before we close out. So yellow thin hair is leprosy. But every church, majority, not everyone, they have Jesus with yellow thin hair. Impossible. God says that's a plague, it's leprosy. Wasn't Jesus healing the lepers? He was healing everybody. So how in the world could he have yellow, thin hair? Impossible. Then it said Jesus Christ's skin looked like it was burned in the furnace. Remember that? Did you read that with us, young man? Can you read that for him, please, before we close out? Revelation, you have, look at the top of the flyer. We put the scripture on there for you. Because we know how people don't like to read. We like to hear what other than racists teach us. We don't want to read for ourselves. Read what it says Jesus looked like. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So Jesus Christ had white woolly hair. Woolly hair is the hair you all have. We all have. This is not woolly hair and it's not white. It's not white and it's not woolly. Go ahead. As white as snow. Come on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Go ahead. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. If you burn anything in a furnace, what color does it get? Right, if you burn white rice in a furnace, what color does it get? Black. Exactly. The Bible says Jesus Christ's feet look like it was burned in the furnace. So how did you get this? How did you get this? Totally impossible. It's a lie. It was a lie meant to keep the slaves in submission. To keep you docile, divided, filled with hate, one for another. Everybody understand? Mm -hmm. So before we close out, it would behoove you to take those flies with you. Follow along with us. Because what we're showing you, you're not going to learn in this school or in your church come Sunday. Okay? Any questions before we close out? Kara? You sure? She's thinking, this guy. No, I'm thinking of a question. What about you? I had a question earlier. You did, and it was a good question. It was another one I can't remember. The Bible covers everything. It covers male and female relations, everything. Many of the things we do before we close, many of the things we do, um, whether it's drug addiction, whether it's our sexuality, the Bible can fix, will unite us if we obey this. That's what I want everybody to understand. We all come out of our, our lifestyles, some of us with drug addicts, drug users, things of like that nature, homosexual, whatever. But when you want to change your life, the Bible is there. All the, historical accuracies is there for us. We have to believe that book. Okay, slavery happened. We know what happened. It talks about nuclear destruction. <laughs> That's gonna to happen too. It gives us the description of Jesus. He said, I'm coming back and you 
Don't look for that guy to come out the sky. He ain't coming. Okay, because that don't exist in the Bible. So, we have to believe the book. Okay? Any other questions? Yes? I mean, it's not really relevant. Do you have two more copies of each of these? Uh, yes. So again, before we close out, I want to stress that what we're teaching and showing you out of the Bible has nothing to do with our feelings of any other race. It's strictly biblical. Everything we say comes from the Bible. That's what I want you to understand. And then some people mistake it. Oh, you're racist. No, it's what the Bible says. We're not racist. We're just going to show you what the Bible says. That's it. That's our standpoint. Okay? Young man, any questions? You're playing with cards. Uh, I, I hope you got your mind full. Yeah, listen. Okay, good. Um, Jordan? Kira. So does that mean that like, being Jew, like a Jew or being Jewish is not like go with your religion? Like, like people that you're going to answer the question. You're, you're going to answer the question for us. Jewish? You're going to answer. You already you know the answer. I'm going to say no. Like, does that, like, that would be like where Jews. Yes, Kira. Yes, you're right. What would they be then? If they, if they, if they like go to synagogues and they say they're Jewish and they follow, like they they take they took your place. Okay, Kira, watch this. If I steal from you, watch this. I'm gonna help you out. If I steal from you, right? Because that's stole something. I see you got your bag. Do you think that? I steal it, and then you say, "Hey, Israel, you stole my bag," and I say, "I'm sorry, Kira." What would I do? Would I keep your bag? Then am I really sorry? Am I sorry for stealing your bag, really? If I'm truly sorry, what would I do? If you say sorry, you're gonna keep your bag. Thank you. So now, Christian society stole America. They stole your identity. They said, oh, we're sorry about slavery. Did they return anything to you? No. The white man that calls himself a Jew, did he restore back to you your true identity and say, Kira, you are the biblical Jew? Did he do it? No. No. So what does it mean? They're not the Jews. You are. Christ is coming back for you. Oh, wait a minute. Last scripture, Luke 1, 71. This will be the last one. What's your name, young man? What is the purpose of Jesus Christ coming back? Why is he coming back? To do what? Okay, you don't know. Watch this. Luke 1, 68. Listen good. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. What's the purpose of Jesus, Kevin? To save us from what? Right here? What's the purpose of Jesus? To save us from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. That's why early in the lesson I kept stressing the word enemies. It said your enemies will put yokes of iron on your neck. Your enemies would sell you as slaves. The Bible says Jesus is coming to save us from our enemies. You see how it all connects? We were not brought to the Americas to be Americans. We were brought here because we sinned. Christ is coming to bring us back home. You have a homeland. And under Christ, we're going to rule the earth. That's what the Bible is about. You understand that? All right. I'm going to end it right there. Uh, pray y'all, believe, follow along, call us. Our number's there, website's there. All right? So with that, we're going to say shalom. Shalom, Israel, Most High, and Christ Bless. We're here at Bergen Community College, where Bishop Nathaniel just gave a beautiful seminar. And here we have... Jordan. Jordan? All right, how did you feel about this whole seminar? I learned this better than actual church, and I go to church every single Sunday. I learn better than I learn... Mystery, then action, church.
You hear that? So that's to all you Christians, get out that church. <laughs> right, here we have Kiera. She also uh, participated in the seminar. And Kiera, how did you feel about today's presentation? Okay, beautiful. Now, who are you according to the Bible, Kiara? Christmas. Ah, uh, here we go. That's what I'm talking about. All right. I'm Eldon Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.